Welcome back to Getting Started with Chef Workstation. I'm Nick Rykar, and in this video, we'll take a look at how we can start detecting and correcting security issues in our environments. In our last video, we took a look at how Chef Run lets us run ad hoc execution of configuration tasks on our systems. Today, we'll branch out and start using Inspec, a tool for auditing security and compliance in similar fashion. We'll also be creating our first cookbook and see how we can use the resources available on the Chef Supermarket to give us a head start on building our automation. Alongside Chef Run, Chef Workstation includes Inspec, which allows us to define our security and compliance requirements as code. Like Chef, Inspec is composed of resources. Like Chef resources, Inspec resources have a type and a name, but unlike Chef, where we're taking action on our system, Inspec resources describe matchers, which define what our desired configuration state should be. Inspec doesn't make any changes to our systems, it simply lets us know whether or not they're properly configured, allowing us to detect any misconfigurations in our estate. I've saved my control to a file called ntpscan.rb. I can then use the inspec exec command, set my transport to SSH, and my identity file to my SSH key, and execute my scan against RHEL1. When the scan completes, I can get validation that my test was in fact successful. Yes, NTP is installed. When it comes to using Inspect for doing more formal security validation, we're going to need a little bit more than just a single resource. Thankfully, this is where the Chef Supermarket comes in handy. Chef Supermarket provides a library of pre-built Inspect profiles and Chef cookbooks written by Chef, our partners, and our community members. Here, I'm going to switch the filter to Tools and search for DevSec. In the search results, I'll select the DevSec Linux Security Benchmarks, which provide controls for a variety of Linux security best practices. From here, we can view the source code in GitHub, and the README even contains some instruction on how we can use the Inspec utility to execute this profile. Back in my terminal, I'll do just that adding in the transport and identity file flags to define RHEL1 and my SSH key. When the scan completes, we get much more data this time around. In the test summary, I can see that 70 of our tests succeeded, whereas 44 failed. Through this output, I can diagnose the precise nature of that failure and use that to craft the appropriate remediations in Chef. To remediate our audit failure, we're going to generate our first Chef Cookbook. Chef Cookbooks store Chef code in versionable artifacts that also contain valuable metadata and any helper files needed for execution. To generate a cookbook, we can use the Chef command provided in the Chef Workstation package. Chef Generate Cookbook WS Demo will create the WS Demo Cookbook. The dash P flag adds a policy file, which we'll see used later. Each cookbook contains a default recipe, into which we can copy our recipes from our previous examples. From this point, we could also start adding new resources to address the failures detected in our inspect run. However, once again, Supermarket can save us a lot of time and effort in this process. Back in the Chef Supermarket, this time I'll leave the filter on cookbooks and search for OS hardening. The OS Hardening Cookbook is a companion to the DevSec Linux baseline profile and can be used to remediate the issues that profile uncovers. In the supermarket, in each cookbook we can see its README, which will give a description of what it configures, as well as any tunable parameters and supported platforms unique to that cookbook. Here we see the WS Demo Cookbook I've generated, into which I've added the resources from our earlier examples. The first file we're going to want to look at here is called metadata.rb. This is where we define things like our cookbook version and what chef versions are required to run it. Into this file, we can also define dependencies. And I'm going to say that our cookbook depends on OS hardening. But where will we find our dependent cookbooks? That's where the policy file comes into play. 
This is where we can define our default source for external cookbooks, and we have the supermarket defined for us, as well as any custom sources for any individual cookbooks. Since my cookbook isn't in the supermarket, it's using the path parameter to just look in the local directory. Once we've defined our dependency, we just need to include its recipe. Back in my default recipe, I can use the include recipe syntax to include OS hardening. And that's it. Cookbooks can be executed with Chef Run the same way that resources and recipes can. However, we need to make sure we tell Chef where to find our cookbooks. If we take a look at my config.toml, it's defining our cookbook repo path as projects workstation demo. So that now I can run Chef Run and provide that WS demo cookbook. By depending on the OS Harding cookbook the way we did, we can run its recipes alongside the resources we created earlier. This also allows us to override any of those attributes defined in that readme, so that if we wanted to alter the behavior of OS hardening, we can do so without actually needing to alter that upstream cookbook. Now that we've successfully converged our WS demo cookbook against RHEL1, the moment of truth comes in rerunning our inspect scan and seeing whether or not we've solved our issue. Now let's rerun inspect and see how we did. This time around, we came back with only eight failures. However, I was expecting zero. We can take a look up through the results to see which controls failed, and our failures all seem to be in inspecting modprobe.d devsec.conf. This is actually a false negative. Because I logged in as my my user user, I don't actually have permission to view that file. However, if I run the command with the dash dash sudo flag, we should now be able to evaluate all the controls and confirm that everything is running smoothly. Success! This time we come back with zero control failures, and Inspec has validated that our cookbook actually solved the problem we came here for. We can now move on to automating our next task. That's all for now. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to check out the Learn Chef Rally track on compliance automation, and also check out inspec.io for information about all the resources that are at your disposal in Inspec. Till next time, take care.